Hello everyone. Great to be back with you all. Welcome to the Africam show brought to you by explore.org. And so nice to be back. My name is Russell Gerber. Back with you all after two weeks or so. Being uh, the proud father of a new baby boy. But uh, lovely to be back on the shows with all of you. And thank you for all your well wishes out there. It is very much appreciated, but uh, nice to be staring into the wild after a lot of domestic action in the last two weeks or so. And kicking off the show today at the beautiful Tao, of course, with a lovely elephant bull and a little plains zebra lurking in the background, waiting for his turn to have a drink at the water hole. I hope you're all well out there. Please feel free to send in your questions, thoughts, comments, or even just a hello. It's always lovely hearing from you. We always like to know where you're watching from as well. And on the show today, of course, just a fun time hanging out together on the live cameras. We'll pop around to the various locations around the country and see what we can find. Of course, if anything shows up, we will cross over and see what uh, surprises we've got from the bush today. And as before I left, it looks like we've had a bit of rain in between. I'm sure some of you can fill me in there as well. Things looking pretty green and lush as we head over to Rosie's to another lurking friend though unlike the zebra who doesn't really lurk this is a definite lurker so we try to get him in focus but I'm sure those of you who have been with us over the last two or three weeks will know this little critter Struggling to get him into focus at the moment, but we're working on that. And that is, of course, our beautiful rock python, or southern African python. Hanging out on his favorite log. Hoping for some bird action. As many of you know, he's had a very much poultry diet in the last few weeks and some incredible things caught on the camera a number of amazing ambush kills that we've seen from this fellow really so awesome to have him hanging around in the same spot day in and day out but clearly you can all figure out why he's had a lot of success or she i'm saying he but i have to admit i'm not sure if it is a male or female it's very difficult to tell without uh, getting up close and personal to that fella slash lady But uh, as we work on getting him into focus, you can see the, just the beautiful coloration on his tail there. As we try to get him back in focus, we'll come back to Tao. Our zebras decided they're finally brave enough to sneak in behind our big old elephant. And as we watch them arrive, let's see who else has arrived. Who's out there? So, Kimberly Jackson, welcome to the show, and thank you for your well wishes on the baby boy. Yeah, thank you so much, Karen Sparks, or Karen, forgive me, welcome to the show. Kathy Barton, well, lovely to have you with us again, Kathy, and thank you for your well wishes. 
OMG 23 and Pounce. Lovely to have you with us, all of you. And who else is there? We've got Shrivant. I think it's Shrivant. I hope that is the correct pronunciation. But thank you very much for your well wishes, everyone. Yeah, it's going to be a few sleepless nights, I suspect, in my future. And that's okay. Totally worth it. But, uh, yeah, if anyone feels like heading out on a safari, um, do give me a call. <laughs> Quite happy to uh, head out the house for a short break. Just uh, don't tell my wife I said that. Who else have we got? Uh, Jen Payne. Jen Payne Pin. Welcome from Australia in Perth. We've got our Python on camera again. You could see how amazing they are. Just staying absolutely deadly still. I see Cindy. very excited about the python as well welcome cindy drake nice to have you with us yeah this python has just been amazing you know some of for me some of the most amazing snake action and sightings i've seen in my career to be honest just because we've been able to watch him behaving so naturally And of course, that amazing skill they have of staying deadly still, utilizing that camouflage of theirs to take out unknowing birdie visitors to the branches. And you never know when something might decide to land on site. That's the fun thing about watching things live. You just don't know what can happen next. And I know for many of you out there who haven't been on safari or in the bush before, it absolutely is one of the reasons why it's such an addictive way to pass the time. Or if you go on holiday, many, many people will go back and forth on safari over and over. And myself being case in point, working as a safari guide and private guide all over Africa, we take every opportunity to, as a family to head on safari as well. It really is just so special. And I know those of you who join us on the cameras and spend time with us here, well, as incredible as it is on the cameras, there's nothing quite like it in real life. Here are some folks at the lodge at the moment, a Tao, enjoying this lovely elephant bull as he drapes his trunk over his tusks. And Pounce asks, why are elephants so intolerant of other animals at the waterholes? Pounce, it's a very good question. We, we talk about it a lot as guides and colleagues. There's no real particular reason. Um, Many guides will argue it's simply because they can. They're big enough and strong enough to do so. Occasionally it can be because the resource is scarce. You know, if there's really not a lot of water around, they'll try to get as much for themselves as they can. But for me personally, I sometimes feel like elephants get bored and decide that chasing away other animals around the waterhole 
can be quite fun. And you'll notice that very often it's the younger teenage elephants, especially the boys, who do the most chasing. And I suppose we could say the same thing about human boys. Always like causing a bit of trouble. And potentially showing off a little. But a very good question. And I don't think there's any real behavioral or scientific reason for that behavior. It's just the way they are. Look at these zebra getting caught in that beautiful afternoon golden sun. And it's one of the things I love about safari in the summer. You get these cloudy skies, green, green environment. And if you're a photographer, yeah, some of your most dramatic and beautiful photographs happen in the summertime. The only trick about safari in summer is, of course, it's summer and pretty darn hot. With temperatures in the afternoons often sneaking above 40 degrees Celsius, which is pretty warm. Oh, we just missed him. <laughs> We've crossed over to back to Willy Fence River. And there you can see a couple of giraffes hanging out, their heads hidden, having a feed. <laughs> so we can't see the heads, but you'll see there's one in the foreground here and then another just to the left. And a black collared barbet calling in the background. If you can look that up on Google. Lovely call of a black collared barbet. And another giraffe arriving on the scene in a hurry, it seems. Another thing, as guides, we often laugh about is when you see one giraffe, there's often two. When you see two, there's often three. And before you know it, you end up with four. Amazingly camouflaged for their size. And like so many of our African animals can walk almost silently through the bushes. Even through the thickest brush, you hardly hear them as they move. But often very inquisitive. And also one of the many animals as guides we utilize on safari to help us locate the predators. Often the predators are what people want to see when they're out on a trip. <laughs> These giraffes are, I think, just roughing about. They look like youngsters. But we often use them, you know, of course they're so tall, Often easy to pick out if they're staring in one direction without moving. They're all looking in a certain spot that is not at us, of course. That's often a clue that there might be something hiding in the bushes in the way of a predator. Anything from lions to leopard, even hyena, wild dogs. Yeah, watching giraffe, impala, any of those animals staring in a certain direction. Very useful way to 
spot a potential predator. Of course, their sense is far better than ours. Their hearing and sense of smell. And one of the things that gets difficult for them, all those potential prey species, is when it does get windy, of course all those scents and sounds are swirling around. Not always easy to pick out exactly where your threats are coming from. And one of the most dangerous things for an animal to do is to run blindly into the bushes without knowing a direction. Oh, there's a very young giraffe that's just snuck out behind that. I think it looks like an acacia. <laughs> Lots of energy in the giraffe today. I love it as well how they look like they're running in slow motion. Nice to see them being a bit more active, though, as we head back to Rosie's and our sneaking python. And a question from Lisa White, asking two questions, actually. How long would you say the python is, and how long do you think he or she will stay at this location? Well... As to your first question, Lisa, I haven't actually been to this location. I don't know exactly how long this particular branch is. But judging at the size and the girth of that little snake, not so little snake, I think anywhere around the two to three meters, I would say, is this python. They can get much bigger. So we popped over to our second cam here at Rosie's. So they can get quite a lot bigger. Up around five, even six meters is the biggest that I've heard of. And as for how long will it stay here? Well, that's a much more difficult question. As I know you would have seen, Lisa, it's been very successful in its hunting in this particular location. And if you just think about that alone, considering the access to water here at Rosie's Pan, a good basking spot to warm up, uh, lots of shady areas to hide out, and then, of course, this incredible hunting location. Well, the snake, the snake might stay here for quite some time. So I suspect the only thing that will really make it move is if the birds and other animals stop landing on this particular branch. And then also any potential major threat that might come into an area, something like a group of mongoose that might come through, banded mongoose, even a couple of singled mongoose like uh, slender mongoose, water mongoose, anything like that could be a real pain for a python. Something like a honey badger as well, but honey badger is unlikely to bother him up here in this tree. And then, of course, the bigger bird species, potential birds of prey. Anything from snake eagle to marshall eagle. Brown snake eagle would probably be a little bit 
out of its league with this python, but uh, some of the bigger eagles potentially could be an issue for this python. So it's only those kinds of things that would really force it to move off. Now let's hope not. It's given us some amazing sightings in the last month or so. Yeah, and Denise Dana says beautiful python. Absolutely, Denise. It's not every day we get to sit and watch a python live on camera in the wilds of Africa. Completely undisturbed and in its natural environment. But what I do think about when we watch these shots and pictures is the unbelievable patience of not only this python, but your wildlife photographers, videographers out there sitting and waiting for those amazing shots in wildlife documentaries. Because you've got to be ready. Anything can happen. If a bird lands right next to it right now, we could see something happen. And you've got to be ready with your camera when it does. Again, just another one of the magical things about safari. Anna Emerson asks, what is the main predator of pythons? Well, Anna, we spoke a little bit about that. As I mentioned earlier, a couple of the various mongoose species. I've also seen leopard killing python. The uh, bigger birds of prey. Oh, hello. <laughs> Well, that is a little bit out of the league of our python. <laughs> the arrival of an elephant at Rosie's pan. Lisa says, asking how long will the python stay there is like asking how long is a piece of string. Well, maybe, Lisa, but still a good question. We're wondering it ourselves. I have to say I'm pretty surprised that he's still here. You know, many predators, even when they do have success at a lo special location, is uh, we will often see them move off to try different hunting grounds. But our rock python seems very content. This current spot. But no action just yet. Why don't we head over back to Tau, I think. Where we got some primates hanging about. And a couple of baboons arriving on site at Tau. I'm sure all the lodge managers and staff are hoping that they stay away from the lodge. As cute and interesting as they are to watch as a lodge manager, kitchen staff at the, uh, at the lodges, they are an absolute pain. Very, very smart, very, very quick. And uh, yeah, if you've been out on safari, I'd be very surprised if you hadn't had your breakfast roll snatched by a baboon or monkey at some point. It's quite interesting in certain locations, baboons are much more timid about coming into the large areas and much more anxious about being close to people, whereas in others, much more comfortable. And really, it all comes down to habituation. They get used to people. So in your wilder areas, 
in more remote parts of, let's say, the Kruger National Park, parts of Botswana, where they really don't see cars or people much, they tend to be much more anxious. And it's quite hard to get good viewing of them, actually. Whereas others will quite happily take a nap in your lounger by the pool of your room and you'll have a very hard time getting him to move. It was a great picture going around a few years ago of a baboon on a very hot day actually laying in the swimming pool, a private plunge pool of one of the lodge rooms. So yeah, some of these baboons live their best life, much like that youngster <laughs> loafing on the back of mom there. Passed out to the world, very much like my son at the moment. But I have to say, they are always fun to watch. As we've gone back to Rosie's, I think this was the young elephant bull who came strolling by. while we were watching our python. And Denise asks, are there any other constrictors in South Africa like boas? No, Denise, that is our only constrictor. Many snakes even smaller snake species, the more non-venomous or mildly venomous snakes, will often use constriction with the bite as a way of subduing their prey. Even venomous snakes will utilize that at times. So generally your bigger hinge fanged snakes like puff adders, gaboon vipers, etc., their modus operandi would be much more to simply bite and then move away and then track down the prey once the venom has taken action. So there are different techniques, but in terms of the larger snakes and constrictors, you know, we just have the, the one. Lovely sight here of this elephant. Just a brief visit. Just decided I'm going to head back into the bush. Had enough of all of you. It brings me back to what we were talking about earlier of elephant bulls. I mean, this is a fairly young bull. Probably left the herd not too many years ago. And so you'll still have a lot of energy in him. And I do feel like often they get pretty bored. Oh, it looks like a jackal in the background there, just running off the left side of our screen. Baboons wouldn't be too worried about a jackal. So they haven't even lifted their heads in that direction. And just time for one more question, I think. Uh, Andy, if I'll ask, does the salt around Tau have any benefit to the baboons? Yeah, Andy, it, it does. You'll see occasionally that they will actually lick certain spots to get a little bit of extra sodium in their diet certain times of year. Many of the animals will do that, the herbivores as well.
occasionally you'll even see some of them eating the soil. It's of course known as geophagia. And that also has certain benefits from minerals and helping with digestion, things like that. So, yeah, the salt does have a benefit for the baboons and the other animals. So thank you for your question, Andy. Well, folks, unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. It flew by. It's awesome to be back with all of you. Thank you for all your questions and keeping us on our toes. Hope you'll join us again next week for the Africam show brought to you by explore.org. We'll be back again on Thursday, of course. We'll be going through some of our fabulous highlights from the last couple of weeks as we look at our jackal wandering in the middle of your screen, right in the background. Looks like a black backed jackal. But uh, do join us on Thursday for our highlight show, also at four o'clock Central African time. Otherwise, we'll see you same time, same place for the Africam show. And until then, have a great week. Enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy this wonderful scene at Tao. We'll see you all soon. Cheers for now.